Hey girls, here we are again studying yet another chapter from the book None Like Him written by author Jen Wilkin. Today we are on chapter 8, God as an Omniscient God. I wanted to take a quick second to apologize over last week not having a video posted on the omnipresence of the Lord, whereas our God is capable of being at all places at one time. I am not. <laughs> And there was a lot going on last week, and I apologize. I did not get around to being able to post a video, so please forgive me for that. But today we're going to get right back on track with God as an omniscient God, a God of infinite knowledge, a God that has no boundary on what he knows. So we've talked about emojis in the past, and... Um, the first emoji, that mind blow emoji, I just, I really can't get it out of my mind for any of these attributes. Um, but another emoji that I have come across is the guy that's kind of like, um, it's, it's, it kind of represents like almost a deliriousness. And he kind of has his eyes half closed, a, you know, there's kind of rolling back in his head. And he's just kind of got this, uh, like, I gave up kind of smile, um, you know, when, you know the trick we play when uh, someone says something to you and you don't hear them and you're just like and you but you didn't have a clue what they just said so it's kind of like one of those smiles it's like I'm <laughs> just faking it right here and and then he's got like this little bit of drool coming out of his mouth so it's just kind of like this uh, like I tapped out a long time ago and now I'm just doing my best to stay upright drools coming down my face that's kind of where I feel like I am at this point in understanding the knowledge of God. Um, how does someone with a very limited knowledge base study a God that has no boundaries in what he knows? <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost like the start of a good joke. But here again, I think that our God is interested in us taking every effort and even in our limitations trying to comprehend a little bit more about who he is and that each day we're growing a little closer to him and we're growing our capacity of knowing him is getting a little bit bigger so that our relationship with him is becoming more dear, more lovely to us, more the priority, not just part of a list of things to do today, but the only reason I exist today. And so I think the Lord is pleased in our effort. So here we are again. We're not going to accomplish it, but I think God's going to be really, really pleased in our efforts to understand. Speaking of understanding, our God understands it all, omniscient. He knows everything. Um, as I was looking this word up, this word know, um, there are thousands of scripture references with the word to know or knowledge or knowing or not knowing. Um, but it narrowed down um, and kind of hummed around one particular Greek word, kind of the base Greek word, and some of you will be familiar with this, maybe from um, just decades of preaching um, that we've received from the pulpit and um, having good teachers that uh, have acquainted us with some of the Greek words. So does this uh, word sound familiar to you, gnosko? Um, Gno kind of it, it it's 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 that um, uh, that brain that knowing um, it's like the head uh, area almost oh how would I describe that anyway gnosko um, that is the base word to know and that's where it comes from all other um, definitions of this word seem to be built on this one um, the word gnosko something that I found familiar or um, uh, fascinating uh, to try to kind of break down maybe the different definitions of knowing 
Um, so you've got a you've got a universal knowing, and then there's a particular knowing. It's kind of like your big picture and then your details. All right. So in the big picture, um, there it breaks down into three parts. So in a general sense, there are three parts. It's a learning. I'm acquiring that knowledge. Um, this would be this would be similar to just our education in school, preschool, K through 12, going to college, maybe you do graduate work or uh, doctorate work, you're getting a master's degree, whatever it is, you're, you're learning more, you're acquiring more information. We do this in relationships as well. Uh, Matthew and I knew each other for 18 years prior to being married. Uh, we grew up together from the age of four. Basically, we knew each other. Um, and then we got married and we found out how much we didn't actually know <laughs> about one another. And so there was still a learning to be done in knowing one another. So in the big general picture, the three parts, the first is it's that learning, it's that educating, it's that gaining of information. The second part is the knowledge. I know it. I understand it. I grasp it. I get it. All right. Um, so it's there. So there's not, there's no more learning. Nailed it. Got it. Know it. All right. Uh, this would be like uh, my daughter Ruby, who is going into third grade, um, is now, let's see here, she's done the addition and the subtraction, and she has kind of been building. Um, kind of a base knowledge of multiplication and so now as we enter into this third grade year we're looking at groups if I have two groups of apples and each group has three apples in them I know for those of you that don't like math you just I lost you you fell asleep you were like Jill talk about not knowing I'm I'm done I'm out I stopped the video I'm not listening to you anymore to you I apologize but for those of us that love math you're gonna get this illustration I have two groups of apples and in each group I have three apples that's basic multiplication I'm taking two groups of three if I count those two groups of three I've got three apples here one two three and I've got three apples here one two three and there are two groups so how many do I have all together one two three four five six two times three is class six all right, that's where Ruby is. She's learning that information. She's learning those basic skills. And something she's going to develop within this third grade year is that she's no longer going to have to ration things out into groups to count them out and understand how multiplication works. She's going to see a flashcard two times three or three times two, and she's going to know it's six, all right? So that's the difference between learning the information and when I see three times two, I just know it's six, all right? So those are the difference between those first two definitions. Remember, we're still in a very general sense. So in those three points, we're learning to know it. The second one is we know it, we got it. And the third one is just a little bit deeper. This is an intimate knowledge of it. This is a, an experiential knowledge of this. This is something that would be likened to, you may know that my husband does not like to mow the grass. And the reason you know it is because he shares it from the pulpit every single Sunday. But do you know it like I know it? Do you know it like his mom and dad know it? See, the experience that the three of us have is watching him mow the grass, seeing the destruction that has occurred when he has been on a riding lawnmower, to see the facial expression, to hear the verbal expression, to to just see inside him those 
that steam developing and coming out of his ears to be hearing about it constantly and why he doesn't like it. See, there's an experience there. You may know he doesn't like to mow his grass. I know he doesn't like to mow his grass because I have been there. I have experienced it. So those are the three varieties of the overall general knowledge, that knowing, that universal knowing. I'm learning it, I got it, and I am intimately acquainted with it. When we look at it in detail form, here's what's interesting in, in the Greek, I, and I only studied in the Greek, I, I am not well versed in the Hebrew, not that I'm well versed in the Greek either, but in this particular knowledge, what I found fascinating, in the details, these were always defined as our knowing God, understanding who God is in particular. So I found that very interesting that that, that knowledge, that detailed knowledge, that in particular knowledge, and it was a hefty section, was, was strictly about us knowing God. So I'm thinking if there's a lot to be said about knowing God, it's really important that we know God. If scripture's talking about it a lot, then that's probably something we should be paying attention to. I just found that fascinating. When we're talking about God's knowledge, like when we look at verses like, let's see here, what was it? Um, 1 John chapter 3, verse 20 talks about how God knows all things. God knows. God knows all things. That gnosko, all right, we realize that's not a learning knowledge, right? We know that that's not a learning knowledge. It's not like God sat back and, and monitored us or observed us for a number of days or, or hypothesized or theorized about how we were going to respond to something. And then as he took um, his little different beakers and cylinders and whatever else you science majors use to combine things and with your goggles and your notebook and your white lab coats, you write down what you're observing as it's happening and you say, oh, I see how this reacted to this. And so then therefore you learn, all right? That's not God's knowledge. He does not learn anything. God's knowledge is that second part. He knows it. Even deeper still, it is the third part. He is intimately acquainted with it. You think you know that my husband doesn't like to mow grass? I know my husband doesn't like to mow grass. My husband knows he doesn't like to mow grass. So you may know it on an indirect level because it was told to you. I may know it because I have experienced it in the sense that I have been intimately acquainted with it for 20 years of marriage and 18 years prior to that. But he knows it in a way that nobody else does because it's inside of him, right? There are things that Matthew thinks about mowing the grass that he doesn't actually express. Hard to believe because I feel like he expresses a lot about it. But there are things that are inside of him that I can't even understand that only he intimately knows. So it's on that much deeper of a level. That's the level that's, that God is on. He knows it intimately and not indirectly as if he studied it one time or someone told it to him one time. And it's not necessarily even indirectly in which he was there when it happened and so he saw it kind of experience and knows it. But he is intimately acquainted with it and knows it because of that. Here's something... Um, <clears throat> Again, that only scholars with an unbelievable ability to know, to know, 
Um, I've already mentioned this before, but um, as Jen Wilkin had talked about the attributes of God, and she said there are other guys who have come before her talking about the attributes of God, so here is Arthur W. Pink, which she, she talks about, and I have mentioned before as well. In his chapter on the omniscience of God, the knowledge of God, he says this, what an incredible point to be made. It should be pointed out that neither God's knowledge nor his cognition of the future considered simply in themselves are causative. Nothing has ever come to pass or ever will merely because God knew it. This is not strictly a knowledge. This is getting into that intimately acquainted with. The cause of all things is the will of God. Now we're not just talking about a knowledge of God. We're talking about a foreknowledge of God. And I know, oh man, this is it's like splitting hairs again. The knowledge of God and the foreknowledge of God are so intertwined. It would ooh, it is so hard to try to separate these two into two completely different types of understanding. It's hard to talk about one without the other. And so that's what he's doing here because they are so intertwined. God's knowledge is not causative. The cause of all things is the will of God. He has a foreknowledge. He elected it to happen. The man who really believes the scriptures knows beforehand that the seasons will continue to follow each other with unfailing regularity to the end of earth's history. We are well aware that the Lord will allow the sun to come up, the sun to go down, the seasons to change. We know this based on Genesis 8.22, 8, basic fact. We know this. Yet, the man's knowledge is not the cause of their succession. Just because we know that the sun will come up and the sun will go down and the seasons will change is not the reason that the sun comes up and the sun comes down and the seasons change, right? Just because we know it doesn't mean that's why it happens. So it is with God. God. So God's knowledge does not arise from things because they are or will be. He doesn't, this isn't a looking in a crystal ball and God's looking in the midst of the clouds and the cloudiness of the ball and he says, oh, I see what has happened. Oh, I see what will happen. You see, even, even, the demons can do that. That's where we get things like palm readings and tarot cards. And Jen Wilkin talked about that. See, the prince of the power of the air, he's got the ability. He's got the ability to know things. He can see what has happened. Maybe I haven't studied this out enough. Can he see what is going to happen? But his limitation, Satan's limitation, and his demonic following our limitation is that we can know these things based on how they were told to us or maybe even experiencing them to such a degree but God's knowledge does not arise from things because they are or will be but because he has ordained them to be do you get that God's knowledge is not a looking into a glass and saying a glass ball and saying oh i see what happened or oh i see what's going to happen and so therefore he somehow responds to it his knowledge is not what causes our knowledge is not what causes the sun to rise and the sun to set and the seasons to change God knows that the sun rises and the sun sets and that the seasons will change, but God doesn't know it because he learned it or because he experienced it. God knows it because he ordained it. It is from him. Everything that is to be known is because of God. He made it so. That's why he knows it. Are you stunned? Are you in a... Uh, kind of state of mind 
God's knowledge does not arise from things because they are or will be, but because he has ordained them to be. God knew and foretold the crucifixion of his son many hundreds of years before he became incarnate. And this, because in the divine purpose, he was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Do you get that? God's knowledge of things is because all things come from him. This 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 is just <laughs> This this is so intense. This is so intense. So in this word gnosko, there is one more thing I wanted to bring up. The interesting thing, another interesting thing about this word gnosko is that in the Greek writings, um, and they called it, they, um, they, they phrased it a, a Hebraistic Ephraim. Oh, hmm, yep, you thought that's what I was going to say. Hebraistic euphemism. <laughs> I couldn't say that right. They used this word, gnosko, um, the way it's written out, um, this intimate knowledge, not the acquiring information, not even the know it, got it, but that intimate experiential knowledge, the way they um, wrote this out in the Greek, um, this is the word that they actually used about the physical connection between a man and a woman. There was an, there is an intimacy experienced there that cannot be understood any other way. And although that can kind of be a maybe a crude way of explaining something, how very interesting um, to explain that knowledge in a way that you can't ugh, you can't tell somebody about it like they can't learn about it like you know what happened with the Roman Empire because I just watched a Netflix documentary on it I'm acquiring the information well I wasn't there I wasn't a Roman I wasn't a Christian at that time I know really nothing about not a whole lot about our own government let alone their government um, and so I, I know it, I'm learning it, but it's, it's an information that's not quite related, right? And then there's the, the knowing it, maybe because you were one of the people that actually lived in that Roman time and you wrote down what was happening at that time. You were a, a scribe of some sort that was, that was acquainted with the happenings and so you were writing it down. And then there are people that were intimately acquainted with what was going on, maybe as a Christian who is being offered up as some form of entertainment to be torn up while still alive by a lion. Okay, I don't know what that feels like. I've never experienced it. The people in the Colosseum could see it happening, but they weren't actually intimately acquainted with what it feels like to be eaten up by a lion. Only that Christian knew. Only those Christians knew who had experienced it. There was an intimate, there was an intimate understanding. There was an intimate knowing. Such is this intimate knowing between a man and a woman when they come together physically. That's not. I mean, you can talk about it. You can kind of tell your kids about it, or you can you can do that sex education. Or um, <clears throat> unfortunately, in our culture, you can see a whole lot of it, right? But there's a difference in having the experience for yourself. That's God's knowledge. He has the experience for himself. He's intimately acquainted with it. And it goes back to why? Because it came from him. It's intimate in a way because it came from who he is. That's how intimately acquainted he is with it. This has been so hard to study this week. 
it's been so hard to write out into words. I kept going page after page. No, I don't. I, I can't. I couldn't get my thoughts together on it. I feel even in part talking here in this video that th these are just ramblings. These trying to grasp the clearer picture of who God is and what he knows. It's unfathomable. But I hope that through your reading this week and through this extra study here online, I hope that you come to a place where it changes who you are. That this knowledge of God, that not just knowing who God is, but recognizing what God knows, that this would change who you are. This should change the way we see our present. This should change the way we see our future. This should change the way we look back into our past. God knows it because it is from Him. He ordained it. And if He ordained it, and it happened because of who He is, then is this not right, the way it happened? the way it is happening and the way it will happen? Is this not right? Is this not good? Because it is from God. It's a hard challenge today, ladies. A hard challenge this week. It's hard to put into words. It's hard to understand in our brains. But like I said before, I think God is interested in our efforts. So girls, don't, don't stop, don't stop trying. Don't lose, don't lose heart in your efforts. Keep studying. Keep moving forward and rest in this today that God knows.